All right, just going to do a brief, small little study, I guess you could call it, on mercy and truth, and just comparing scripture with scripture, and just showing a really interesting comparison in Psalms about mercy and truth that you can compare to the, you can basically apply it and compare it to a New Testament member of the Church of the Living God. So, just want to give a, a quick scripture, just a key important scripture I wanted to start the video off with, to just, just keep in mind through the whole thing. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in our in, in all our uh, tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which uh, which all which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Okay. Now just keep in mind, I'm not good at reading things on a computer. I do it on a computer so I can navigate between verses easier. Okay. But Jesus Christ, you know who is, by the way, the same being as God the Father, okay? They're not like some kind of Catholic Trinity thing where all three even persons. No, blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You do see a distinction there, but they are the same person. I've covered that in other videos. But notice how he's called the Father of Mercies. That's simple. Well, we're gonna do a little comparison. So here's here's what's going on in the thing of mercy and truth. I'll put it that way. Uh, God, so, God showed David mercy, even when David did not deserve it and committed very serious sins. Sins that actually merited the death penalty in the Old Testament, like adultery and murder. You can draw comparisons to the mercy that God showed David by sending Jesus Christ to die on the cross and the fact that Jesus Christ is the truth. You see John chapter 14, verse 6. Okay? Uh, keep in mind that David is also a typology of a New Testament member of the Church of the Living God. So here, here's, here's, here's a comparison I'm trying to make. Psalms 25, verses 6 to 11. Turn there. Remember, O God, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have, have been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions, according to thy mercy. Remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. The pa all the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his tes and keep his covenant and his testimonies. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon mine iniquity, for it is great. So, and by the way, what can be David's iniquity? Well, for example, in, in uh, 2 Samuel chapter eleven, David commits adultery and uh, a form of murder. You know, pardon my iniquities, but notice there, mercy and truth. Now. I'm going to get to my comparison, but we're going to read another scripture. Psalms 86, verse 11 to 15. Psalms 86, verse 11 to 15. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forevermore. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered me from the delivered my soul, sorry, from the lowest hell. O God, the proud are risen against me, and the assemblies of violent men have sought after my soul, and have not set thee and have and have not set thee before them. But thou, O God, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious long suffering, and plenteous in mercy and truth. Okay. So again we see we see God is gonna show David mercy. That David, obviously, you can see, knew he didn't deserve. Okay, now compare this. Here's my comparison. Compare this with Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. God had mercy on David just as God has mercy on you if you're a born-again believer, member of the church of the living God through Jesus Christ. We're going to see a comparison here. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. And by the way, mercy that you don't deserve. None of us deserve the mercy that God has shown us. None of us deserve to have him send his son to die on the cross for our sins. None of us deserve that. Just as David did not really deserve the mercy that God showed him. Because David, the sins he committed, he deserved death for them. Just like we deserve death and also the second death in hell for our sins. But guess what? God showed us mercy that we didn't deserve just as he did with David. That's kind of like, that's just basically the comparison I'm trying to make here. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 to 7. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, through in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, 
even when, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. So, we can see a comparison there. God is showing us mercy because we were by nature the children. If you're born again, when you were lost, you were by nature a child of wrath. You walked according to the flesh, but he had mercy and grace for us. And by the way, what is truth? The truth is Jesus Christ. John 14, 6. And guess what? The word of God is truth. John 17, verse 17. And guess what? Jesus Christ is the word. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 2. Here's another example of this in the life of Paul. The apostle Paul had mercy and truth shown to him, even when he knew he didn't deserve it. Okay. Uh, for, and by the way, so you can see uh, Acts chapter 9, verses 1 to 10 for Paul's conversion. By the way, I just wanted to point that out. But 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 to 16. And by the way, too, I need to point this out as well. Just, just because you hear this thing, well, ignorant and willful sin, there is no difference. And we're going to see here, just because you do ignorant sins does not mean you, you don't deserve hellfire. That's simple. We're going to see right here, Paul knew that he was sinning, even though he did it, you know, ignorantly. Why? Because there's no difference. Sin is sin. There's no difference when is there's no difference between willful and ignorant sin when it comes to whether you deserve hellfire or not. Okay, we're going to see that right here. First Timothy chapter one verses twelve to sixteen. I do apologize about that. Had a interruption there, but anyway, First um, Timothy chapter one verses twelve to sixteen. And I thank G Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer, and a persecutor, and injurious, but I obtained mercy, because I did it ignorantly, in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding, was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief, present tense there. Uh, verse 16, how be it for this cause, because I obtain mercy, that in me first G Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them, which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Good uh, example of a, of a changed life after salvation as well. But you see, Paul had mercy shown to him. You know, he did it through ignorance and unbelief, but God showed him mercy. Okay. Now you can see a connection also between mercy and truth to the light that God provides. Compare for example, I'm going to read a scripture in Psalm about God being the light, which again ties back to mercy and truth. But you see a comparison between mercy and truth. We're going to see a connection here, I'll put it that way. A connection between mercy and truth and the light that God provides. Compare this with the fact that Jesus Christ is the light to those at salvation. Okay, Psalms 89 verses 14 to 15. Psalms 89 verses 14 to 15. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. Now, what is that? What is the light that opens your eyes to the truth, that leads you out of darkness? Well, compare this with how Jesus Christ is a light to those that accept him. John chapter 9, verses 35 to 39. John chapter 9, verses 35 to 39. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, he, who is he Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both, thou hast both seen him, and it, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. And Jesus says, For judgment I come I am come into this world, that they might they might see, that, that they that they which see might not see, and that that they which see might be made blind. Okay? He's a light that comes into the world. So that they that can't see, they're gonna see. And again, not good at reading things on a computer, but hence why I put the scripture on the screen so you can read it yourself. Okay? I find that reading stuff on a screen, it could just it messes up some of my vision, but you know, it happens a lot with some people, but the point is, is that Jesus Christ, he's the coming to the world. He's the light. It's that simple. He is the light that leads you out of darkness. And we're going to see this um, in these other scriptures right here. Acts chapter 26, verses 15 to 18. Acts chapter 26, verses 15 to 18. 
And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of the things which thou hast seen, and of those in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Okay? So Jesus Christ, he is that light. We're going to see again in this other scripture that Satan has a light too. But the light of Satan is a blinding light. Meanwhile, the light of Jesus Christ, it leads you out of darkness. Look at read in these other two verses. Okay. And the final, the final scripture I'm going to read, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 to 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 to 6. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves for your ourselves for your servants, ourselves your servants, sorry, for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So we see that Satan, he blinds people to the truth. But Jesus Christ, the light, the glorious gospel of the light of Jesus Christ, it opens you up. It, it leads you out of the darkness that Satan has his children in. Like you read again, compare it back to Acts chapter 26. And again, we compare this to Psalms 89. Justice and judgment is belongs to God. You compare that, for example, again, you make so many comparisons. You compare scripture with scripture. Uh, Jesus Christ in John chapter 9 talks about judgment. And then you have Psalms 89. God talks about judgment there. So you see there, obviously, uh, Jesus Christ, I'll just, I'm just going to ignore it, uh, but basically what's happening is that Jesus Christ, he is the light, and we have, and by the way, too, I'm just going to point this out as well, by the way, too. Again, like I said, Jesus Christ and God the Father, they're the same person. Okay? They're the same being. There is a distinction in the Godhead, but the light in Psalms 89, okay, it's the same being as Jesus Christ because they're one and the same. They're one person. There's three that bear record in heaven. These three are one, 1 John 5, 7. And Jesus Christ, he, he provides light to those that are in darkness, just as we read in Psalms 89, verses 14 to 15. Sorry that the calling was kind of distracting me a little bit, but I do apologize about that. So that's the point. Jesus Christ, okay, God the Father is mercy and truth. And Jesus Christ, who is the same being as God the Father, obviously, Okay. And by the way, too, I need to point this out. I'm not oneness. I'm not modalist. Okay, that's heresy, too. I believe in the biblical Godhead of body, soul, and spirit. But, which again, mystery of godliness. But, but the point is, is that the mercy of truth is prevalent in the life of a New Testament member of the church of the living God. Because the same mercy that God showed David is being shown to you if you're a born again member of the church of the living God. And the light that David was had through God the Father is prevalent today if you're born again the light of jesus christ leads you out of darkness that's simple so I just wanted to point that out uh just want it's just an interesting comparison i wanted to make it wasn't like a whole deep deep study i mean i don't do that kind of stuff i just do simple videos but just an interesting comparison you can look into it yourself but sorry again the calling was the calling was kind of distracting me a little bit that's why i kind of got messed up near the end i'm like you know lost my train of thought but anyway the bottom line is is that you know, just make the comparison look into it yourself uh anyway may the grace of our lord jesus christ be with all the brethren goodbye Thank you.